Hello everyone. Uh, I'm guessing if you're watching this, it's because you know that I'm Avery Ramos and I'm a runner for Purdue Northwest. And I planned on making uh, a running video, a couple actually. And this is the one that I'm probably not even going to edit much and just uh, upload to YouTube. I've always wanted to tell people uh, why I run. And people also ask me, how do I stay motivated to train uh, for years on end. There's a car that's driving past me right now. I'm in an empty parking lot, so I'm not sure if they're wondering why I'm talking to myself, but we'll roll with it. Um, a side quest I've always had was to record some sort of video where the sun just slowly sets and you can see my face in there. And I think that's what I'm just going to do. I'm going to talk and I'm going to give some motivational speech and also give a bit of a story on why I run and why I'm motivated to run every single day, even though what I do is uh, considered crazy by many. If you don't know, I run about 100 miles a week at my highest. I try to run at least 80 a week. My biggest thing I'll start off with saying is that why you do something is so important, even if it's not running related. You have to love and nourish a dream or an idea you have if you're going to keep working at it. My why with running starts, my real why start with running starts, started when I was, I would have been, I think, 12 years old. Uh, I had an uncle who passed away very unexpectedly uh, with, uh, he passed away very unexpectedly and he was always a big supporter of me and uh, my athletic endeavors. And so it was very rough for me and for my family to deal with his loss at the time. And uh, as I was grieving, I uh, <clears throat> I promised, uh, I sort of made like a mini promise to myself and to him. And I later told other people the promise is that I promised that I would win the middle school conference race uh, for him. At the time, I probably had like a mile PR of like 550 or something like that, maybe even slower. And I, that is nowhere near fast enough to win the middle school conference meet. So it was a pretty absurd idea. And it took two years before I even won our actual race, let alone the conference race. What changed is uh, the passing of someone else. It was my old uh, science teacher in middle school. He, uh, he taught me in sixth grade. He, I distinctly remember a conversation uh, between me, him, and my mom, either at a meet or like a parent, uh, like a parent teacher conference or something like, or like an open house. But basically, he was like, uh, or my mom was mentioning how she was hoping that I can uh, run under six minutes in the mile, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I'll try. He said, Avery, you know the old saying that Yoda said in Star Wars: "Do or do not." there is no try that was kind of like at the beginning where he would always tell me like oh how are you feeling at practice uh he took a liking to uh the four by eight team i had a there was a four by eight team in my seventh grade year that was undefeated we nearly set a school record and i remember him uh patting me on the back as he handed me uh my uh medal for the conference champions for the as a four by eight team and he was very kind and he definitely dealt with me probably acting stupid in his class as a sixth grader and one day during track conditioning over uh i think it would have been in february uh he passed away uh very unexpectedly it, it was some sort of heart problem i honestly that that whole time frame of hearing the news was just such a blur. All you really all we ever thought about was wow, our science teacher and our coach is gone. And that brings a big uh element of why I am motivated and why I run and why I do what I do every single day. And some people think this is kind of absurd or crazy, but I think you need to start off at the prem with the premise that Death is inevitable, and sometimes death is sudden. The thing you love, 
life itself, you know, the thing you love, we all love the most, which is living life, could be gone in an instant. And you only ever get, we only ever get to have one life, you know, as far as we know. And I don't believe that I want to spend this one life that maybe or may not be here could could be I could lose my life today, tomorrow, or several decades from now. But regardless, I know that every single day that I live, I'm going to make it worth it. I'm going to work hard and I'm gonna nourish my dreams and goals. You know, I've been I've lived for twenty years and since I've had goals, which is probably age twelve Every year I've been alive, I say that it's been the best year I could have possibly been. And I want to be able to say that every single time. So the idea that the next day isn't guaranteed and that you need to cherish it and not finish with uh, any regrets is a super important uh, element in staying motivated. Like, I, you know, if you can see, I have a tattoo that says no regrets. This is before I realized that no regrets was like a really cringe tattoo idea, but I own it and I really hope people skip over that one and notice everything else I have <laughs> tattoo wise. But um, back to uh, staying motivated and why I run. When my teacher passed away, I distinctly remember just, uh, sorry if I get emotional at, at some point during this, I distinctly remember like just sitting on my knees and uh like crying at his uh at his classroom because we all convened literally the entire middle school when we found out of his passing uh we convened around his uh his classroom and we all just cried we left notes people were saying prayers um I I cried. I don't like to admit that I cry, but I cried a little bit because you kind of realize, like, anyway, now that I compose myself a little bit, uh, this teacher specifically, he not only was a mentor to me, but he also did a lot of, like, his own athletic endeavors. So he ran uh, half marathons and marathons before for charity he lost a lot of weight. He really turned his health around. And just to see him go so suddenly, such a uh, inspiration, it struck something in my heart that uh, I have months, because this has happened in February and the conference meet would have been in May. I have months to make a change with my running career and really actually put in work to become a conference champion not just for my past uncle, but now for, uh, we'll call him Dan. I don't know if you guys know, but this shirt says Dan Strong, and this is the shirt that was uh, given out to uh, the track athletes after his passing at the end of the season. So from then on, every single day that I woke up, I said, you have to honor the people that have passed that have left an impact on you. And the reason it's people that have passed specifically that motivated me is because it just teaches you that life is short and life is precious and that you want to cherish them and you want to cherish their memories and you've got to cherish your memories and your life. So every single day that I don't, that the next day is uncertain essentially, and I'm going to keep working hard. If so, if I'm gone the next day, I can say I gave it my all. I won my first mile race that season, I ran 514. And by the end of the season, I cut down to 503 as an eighth grader. And I won the middle school athletic conference championship uh, race. And uh, I'm going to get emotional again, maybe. But I distinctly remember the final, uh, <clears throat> that final meet, I was getting very nervous because my, uh, coaches gave me uh, like a, the heat sheet for the mile race and I realized that I only had like the third or fourth uh, fastest time and I was fine with it at the time but then as I let my overthinking brain think about it more I started realizing that I might not win this and that it might all <clears throat> be for nothing and that I might lose which looking back now you shouldn't be afraid to lose I if I lose I lose it's just the way it is but uh, 
And the other thing to note to get to the rest to the end of the story is that we all also had headbands that said Dan Strong on them, just like what the hashtag on the shirt says, because we wanted to honor him for uh, the conference race because it's the first time we had a conference race in years without uh, without him as a coach. And I was sitting in the stands and I was just kind of covering my face and I was really terrified. I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is going to be too hard. And the, the most random person that I hardly ever talked to, he came up to me and he said, what's wrong? And I'm just like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm freaked out. Like I could lose. And he literally just, he, ta he tapped on my forehead and said, think about who you're fighting for. <clears throat> think about who you're fighting for. And that really just struck a nerve in me. You got to realize that there's no better way to honor people than to uh, fight for them and let them live on, let their legacy live on through what you do as you're alive. <clears throat> and then I went, <clears throat> I'm not choking, I'm not crying, I promise. And then I won the race and I chose to do cross country and track in high school. I chose, I chose soccer or I chose cross country over soccer and high school was a very rough time for athletics for me I struggled with injury uh, every single season and I realized again that I was going to have one last season senior year track season to uh, get to get it right I guess in, the, in a sense by get it right looking back now in hindsight it just means don't don't give up finish satisfied with your performance and don't have any uh don't have any regrets <laughs> and it really i was reminded of my running journey and my running story because on the it would have it would have been like the fourth uh anniversary of uh dan's passing i it was a very there's a snowstorm that day there was about two inches of snow on the ground and I get a notification on my phone on Facebook saying, uh, oh, here's the post showing the anniversary of the, uh, his passing. And I'm not superstitious or anything. I don't really believe in, uh, in like an afterlife or ghosts or anything. But if there is, I think that the spirit, or I think that his spirit came down to me and said, <laughs> It's time to kick it into high gear and uh and let's let's finish this season and nail and nail this. So that day I go out for a seven mile run in probably like ten degree weather and like I said, about two to three inches of snow on the ground. And that was sort of my uh run as a tribute to as a tribute to him. And then I realized it's like, I realized that I have, to, I owe it to myself and I owe it to the people that have inspired me to, to get this right. There's a quote uh, called, or there's a quote that says, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I, it applies to science and math and the sci scientists and mathematicians that have come before us. And I actually think it applies to it can apply to other things as well. All of my success is based on the people that have inspired me and taught me and helped me along the way. In my opinion, the only thing I have is, uh, the only thing that I've done for myself is be brave. I've been very brave. But there's so many people, teammates and coaches and teachers and uh, parents that have mentored me and really inspired me. And I think that's kind of like uh, part of my why is I, there's so many people behind me. I owe it to myself and I owe it to them to make myself proud. There's so many people that have done so much for me. You know, when things get hard, you know, you got, I think about them. I think about the people that, uh, that message me every single day and tell me, uh, good job on your last workout. Good job on your last run. You know, I hope your injury gets better. I hope that you have a good long run. I hope you handle it. I'll run with you. You know, that, you know, giving you a handshake after you race. 
it's it's a very it's a very wonderful feeling and it keeps you it keeps me accountable it ke and it can keep you accountable too that reminds me i have to give a special shout out to my friend uh abraham abraham if you're watching this which hopefully you are you're a very good friend and i just remembered what you texted me earlier today and that's why i am mentioning you in the video moving on so in order to stay motivated you have to have your why and i truly believe if you have a good why because for me my why is i have so much vested into this this is freedom this is mental health this running is all these things for me there's so many people behind me and that's my why I owe it to myself, my friends, my family, my supporters, and I owe it to the people that I look up to every single day. They want me to succeed and I'm and I'm going to do it for them. I'm for the all the people that I love that have are still both here and have passed. Cuz like I said, we're not going to be here forever. They're all going to live on and they're going to live through me. I'm going to honor the people that have gone out of their way to help me with my journey. And that's that's my motivation because it's been a difficult uh, winter and indoor track season for me. I got injured like one or two times with ham with a hamstring problem, the same hamstring problem that's happened since last year during cross country season. I am slowly coming back, and right now uh, my teammates are getting to run at the conference meet. Uh, I did not get to make it. I'm home and they are in Saginaw Valley State University or maybe in the hotel room right now. I'm not sure how the time uh, switch works. I'm not sure what the order of events are. Cause I gotta be honest, I'm still a little too nervous to look at the results of the meet and see other people get to run the race and I don't, which is stupid. I should never compare myself to others, but I, I'm still struggling ment with the mental aspect of running in case you guys are not aware. But uh, I started thinking, like, I really just want to quit. You know, I want to quit. You know, it's not fair, is what I thought to myself. Why always me? I'm not cut out for this. I'm not meant for this. It'd be easier if I just quit. And it was really... It was last night and earlier today that I kind of sort of I got reminded that what would what would all the people that have spoken to me and given me advice you know the two people that I think of that have passed you know how they expect not what they expect but what they've taught me and what they've told me Avery you're a champion do or do not there is no try I'm proud of you you're gonna be great one day that is something that I just simply lost in a little bit mentally. And then I realized like, none of, I, metaphorically speaking, none of my supporters, none of my friends and family, they didn't raise me to be a quitter. They didn't raise me to be afraid to fail. You know, if you fall down, it's because you climbed up high. It's, it's okay to fail. And I think that, uh, when you put back into perspective why you're doing this, like I realized I do this because, A, I love this sport and it's good for my body and my mind, but also there's people that are backing me that don't want to see me quit. You're going to be inspired and you're not going to, you're not going to take this for granted. You know, and now it's more like the motivational part of this video, I guess. Just... Take a moment to visualize what you want in life and how you get that. Go ahead, because if not, this is going to be an awkward silence. There we go. Now, just realize that, like I said earlier, life is short and we could all be gone at any time. Imagine that you disappear and you don't have those things that you want and you didn't even try for it you're going to be a little disappointed in yourself and you can't let that happen you don't want to have disappointment you don't want to have regrets and you don't want to have personal self-doubt 
So I guess that's the biggest uh, thing I can tell you all to stay motivated. And people, people ask me why I run so much and what to do, why, how do I get out of bed? It's because I realize that every day that I will put off work to working towards my goals is a day I could die with regret. I don't want to reveal my personal mantra yet or what my affirmations are. I mentioned that in another video that I'm making, but essentially a little bit of a rewording of the phrases that I tell myself are, I will, I swear to die with honor and I swear to die with glory. With die, to, die with honor and die with glory, I don't mean I, you know, start a revolution. I don't mean that I'm gonna change the world. I mean that I'm going to die proud of myself. Because even if I don't accomplish everything, at least I tried it. And, uh, awkward silence. I want to conclude with this. So I've experienced much more failure in my running career than I have success. There's probably maybe one or two seasons of high school, middle school, and college athletics that I am truly proud of and that I would not change anything uh, and I wouldn't have a do-over. I would definitely love to have a do-over more than anything else. But when I look back at it, the lessons I've learned from failure and the memories that I've gotten and how much wisdom I've gained th through both winning and losing that's worth more to me than any gold medal, any conference championship, any first place trophy, any school record. Like there's not like the, the lessons and the mental strength and the things you learn, that's what matters the most. And obviously I'm working hard every single day to succeed, but at the same time, if I lose, that's so, and if I don't get what exactly what I want, that's okay because this journey has changed my life forever. I've almost ran, I've almost been running for more time in my life than like I've spent almost half of my life running, and very soon it's going to be I've spent more time in my life as a runner than I will have been as not a runner. If that makes sense, it probably doesn't. I might cut that part of the video out. We'll see. But in my heart because of the things I've learned and the progress I've made, I am molded into a champion and I believe that I'm a champion in my own way. When I started out running, I could run like a, I could barely even run like two miles. It took me forever to be able to finish two miles without stopping. My first ever 5K, I ran 30 minutes and like 10 seconds let me think about nine years later i just finished a 5k workout on the treadmill in 1533 that alone should inspire all of you to just keep working at it someone who's not that talented like me can still run in college i can still run lots of miles i can still hopefully one day become a marathoner i can you can make running friends that might seem scary now because of how fast they are but you can get there one day. All it takes is for you to have your why and to nourish that dream every single day. If you're willing to work hard every single day, and I mean every single day, whether it's actually, you know, with running, if you're actually training or if you're stretching or if you're eating right, if you're meditating, if you're giving, you know, or if you're taking care of your body just in general, taking care of your mind, I truly believe that you can be unstoppable and you can accomplish almost anything. And I'll leave you all with uh, one final reminder that it is not always about the destination, but the journey. Thank you.